Hey everyone, it's Paulie. So it's time for another unscheduled, unplanned vlog update, diary entry, whatever you want to call it, just to give you an update on what's been happening, what's been going on. And uh, today I'm actually going to stick to a, a topic, and um, today's topic is going to be uh, what it's like producing a podcast or radio show. So um, recently uh, uh, we were fortunate enough to get uh, 12 episodes a season at uh, DRN1, which is a community-based radio station, the sound of Perth, uh, just here in Perth. It's uh, locally owned and operated. And uh, we were able to get a show called Balls put on, which is uh, 12 episodes talking about basketball culture with coaches, athletes, and other people involved in the WA basketball community. Um, I co-host with, uh, well, my co-host is uh, Charles Caviru, uh, athlete and uh, a fitness trainer. Um, our audio engineer is Daniel Mini Smee Monaghan. Uh, we've got an official photographer, Bryce Taylor. And uh, yeah, we record the episodes there at the studio and we've had some fantastic guests already. So I guess what I'm going to talk to you about is if you have an idea for a podcast or you think you can start a podcast or would like to start a podcast or a radio show, these are probably some of the things that you want to think about um, or take into consideration. And while I was aware of some of the uh, how can I put it? Some of the tasks that you'll be required to do, some of the, the deadlines you'll be required to meet. Um, I was aware of that sort of stuff. I was aware of the workload, but there were some things I was not aware about, um, and we'll run through a couple of those. So uh, I guess the first thing would be, um, where are we? Why radio? Um, well, The creative community that we're in, uh, there's one or two audio engineers, but very few of us had, have had experience with uh, regular podcasting, production, and that sort, of, that sort of thing. So for us, the avenue of radio was to try to be able to you know, just run a show for 12 weeks and deliver high quality content, but also learn along the way because uh, yeah, we, we didn't know anything. I mean, yes, you can go buy your equipment straight away and whatnot, but it's a steep learning curve if you don't have a background in audio. And while we did have Mini SME with us, um, if you try to do everything yourself, this can very quickly become a full-time job. Just a 30-minute segment will take up your whole week. So um, being able to have a team delegate tasks and having a team that's really experienced and great at what they do helps so much. Um, so radio for us was just getting about the experience and also uh, while most people say traditional media is dead, um, you've got a lot of these smartphone apps, digital radio and other avenues now that you can explore to really grow your audience. Um, so you know, being available on iTunes, having the video copy on YouTube really backs up the radio station and the show and, uh, and I think <clears throat> being on a traditional station as well, um, it allows our audience to listen to other content, so it's not just, pardon me, but the burps, it's not just basketball related content or not just ours, but there's a variety of content on there. So the audience is more likely to stay on that channel and, uh, and listen to other locally created content. Um, radio for us also was, as I mentioned, a way to learn. So uh, John, Bryce, myself, Charles and, uh, and Mini Smee have all learned a great deal uh, through this experience. Um, now, uh, how did we come about to doing our, uh, our podcast slash radio show? Well, firstly, yeah, a lot of research, a lot of reading, um, looked at other people's podcasts that we liked. Uh, the first thing a lot of people do is they go, I want something like Joe Rogan. Well, okay, a lot goes into that. You've got the videography, you've got the streaming, you've got the, the editing, post-production, pre-production. There's a lot involved. Um, so just being able to do a 30 minute episode and I guess deliver it in a way in which we can reach the most amount of people, bring light to the WA basketball culture and have some fun along the way was the, the sort of main priority. And uh, we looked into different avenues of being able to record, what sort of equipment we need, the time involved, the methods of marketing and promotion, um, what quality of audio was required, what, what's the content of the audio, what's the content of the, uh, the podcast. It needs to have some sort of a structure. 
So we learned all those basics and I sort of was able to estimate the hours required. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a lot more hours than you think. So what we, uh, what we then did was, um, where are we? We sort of divided up the work between the different members. So Bryce being the photographer, he handled a lot of the photography and, and Mini Smee does all the audio production. He's there in the studio with us when we record. So that's a, that's a huge workload load off. Having a co-host like Charles, uh, we'll, uh, we'll review the questions a couple of weeks before. Um, now, finding guests, um, a lot of people will say they want to be on your show and we've, had, we've been very, very lucky that everyone that has, uh, we've asked has, has said yes, but um, I am aware that you know, other podcasts, they'll have issues getting guests and it's, it's just timing, it's scheduling, especially with the radio side of things. While we can do radio calls, it's, uh, it's best to do it in the studio and at a certain time. So um, being able to you know, sort of lock in those guests is, is difficult. Um, and obviously, you know, you want to aim high and get the best guests you can, but uh, that could be hard at first. So I'm, if you've got some friends that are in that same field, uh, we were very fortunate. Charles has a lot of friends in basketball. Uh, we've been able to utilize his network and, uh, and have them on as guests, which has been amazing. Um, so yeah, getting and securing guests is, uh, is can be, uh, can take up a lot of time, but is very rewarding when it does happen. And also do a lot of research on your guests. Um, you don't want to be in the room with your guests not knowing what they're about, what their message is. Um, so being sports related, we're very fortunate that Charles has a, a fantastic background in sports. Uh, so um, yeah, he's, he's right on there with the questions and whatnot. So yeah, knowing your audience, what they want to hear, the questions they want asked, and also knowing your guest is, uh, is very important. Um, other things that uh, I guess I could give advice for would be um, the workload. So if your show's on a certain day, you want to schedule you know, two, three weeks in the head with the guests, uh, everyone. If you're doing it by yourself, then that's fine, but if you've got a team, then you'll need to arrange everyone. Um, and of course, once you get that going, that becomes a bit easier. You can sort of get efficiencies out of it. Now, the best, uh, the best and the worst things from this experience, I would have to say, uh, one, fun. So it's been extremely fun. I've, um, I've learned so much. I've met some amazing people and yeah, it's, it's fun. I, I, I'm pretty tired right now, and I'll, that, that, that's on the bad side of things, but um, I will get into that. But no, it is really fun. The learning aspect has been phenomenal. We've got a, a fantastic station manager, uh, Russell from DRN1. Uh, and of course, working in the team, they're able to give really good constructive feedback, which allows us to improve each episode. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's another good, uh, good thing. Uh, another good thing that uh, I've come back from is the, uh, the feedback that I've got from the audience. Um, hearing the audience give compliments to the team and myself and the guests and uh, bringing certain issues to awareness has, um, has really been fulfilling. Um, it wasn't a goal, it wasn't something that we thought would happen, but it, it just is fulfilling to see us being able to uh, bring awareness to some of the issues that, that athletes face and, um, and talk more with them on a one-on-one -on -one on a platform where they might not normally have the, uh, the opportunity to be so open um, and so forth. So uh, that, was, that was a big surprise and, and very enjoyable. And of course, um, it's exciting when an episode drops, just to see the reaction from people and uh, uh, to see the reaction from the guest and you know, knowing that we've done a good job. It, uh, it gets better with each episode. Um, now, some of the bad things. Okay, so some of the bad things. Time. Uh, this is the worst. You will underestimate the amount of time you need for this dramatically. Um, I was thinking a 30 minute episode would, wouldn't take more than 10, minute, 10 hours a week. You know, that's uh, video, uh, audio, editing, um, getting that all sent off to the station manager, doing the uh, outline, booking guests, scheduling everyone in, doing the marketing and promotion. No, 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 that's double that. Um, 30, 30 minutes takes about a good 15, 20 hours a week. Um, once you've shared it to all your platforms, got all your artwork ready, double-checked everything, 
uh, metadata and images and audio files and uh, it's it's very tiring like I've I've maybe had a couple of eight hours sleeps in the last last couple of months but um, a lot of nights have been you know four six four five six hours and um, unfortunately that has to stop because I've it's affecting I've noticed other aspects of my life and work and whether it's I become more efficient at what I do or delegate more tasks, I'm, I'm yet to, to figure it out. But uh, uh, we've got a break this weekend. We were able to double up episodes this week and uh, I think I'll take some time to try and see if we can streamline what we're doing because it is very time intensive. I'm, I'm looking forward to the end of the 12 weeks to take a break. Um, so that's the time. And of course, um, being a producer, I did not expect... Uh, the the role of a producer to be so um, involved. When you're a producer, you're not just making sure, or a showrunner, you're not just making sure the show's right, the script's right, everything's, you know, the artwork, the audio copy. You're also looking after the guests and the hosts and the other people in the creative community. And that's something I probably wasn't ready for and I did not expect. And... Having the the community members look to you for guidance and uh, to help them boost their whether it be boosting their confidence or give them uh, yeah some confidence boosting remarks or some feedback that's constructive or uh, being supportive or listening to their problems I wasn't expecting that and I think last week it was a combination of things with uh, my grandparents and uh, a couple of other issues and. This week, I'm just emotionally drained. I have not, I, I mean, I've been my normal happy self, but I just can't, um, I, I didn't expect that part of a producer role. And I sort of sort of understand now why it's so difficult, um, and I know that with more sleep, I could do better. Uh, so that's about delegating the work or, or making it more efficient. But um, yeah, if you're a producer, you've really got to take care of your uh, your people and your team. And you don't have to, I guess, but I find it important because if my team isn't having fun, then I'm not having fun and we're not creating something that we enjoy. Um, if it's work, we're, we're not doing this because it's work. We're doing this because we enjoy it and it's fun. Um, and as soon as it becomes work I do, or my team doesn't enjoy it, then... I take that as my responsibility. I, I don't know if that's a producer's job or not, but that's something that I think um, that's that I didn't expect. But I've definitely sharpened my teamwork skills this this week, learning to uh, be a bit more patient, um, listen more, um, definitely ask more questions. Um, I I probably do make too many assumptions, so I do need to ask creatives more what they want and their thoughts on certain subjects. I guess that goes for everything in life. But um, yeah, that, that has probably been the two biggest challenges. It's been the sleep and the, uh, the, the role of the producer as well. But that is far outweighed by the benefits um, of seeing the happiness on the team members when we have fulfilled an episode, uh, on getting messages of support you know, passing them on to the team members and uh, and really being able to provide a platform for these athletes and coaches, which once again, they wouldn't get. Um, so, you know, despite the, the tiredness, it's temporary. Uh, <laughs> everything has, uh, has been a blessing and I would have to say this is one of the most enjoyable experiences of my life. I'm very, very lucky to have the people that are uh, around me that I work with um, taking their time and their patience with me uh, being human, I make loads and loads of mistakes, um, and I'll be the first to admit it. Um, probably too quickly, probably too quickly sometimes. Even if it isn't my fault, for some reason I think it's my fault, and I could have avoided it. But is that that could be the producer mentality? I'm not sure. But uh, nonetheless, I've been very grateful <clears throat> for the guests, the team members, the listeners, the audience, and just uh, an amazing ride this has been. I. I encourage you, if you do think about doing a podcast, speak to someone that's doing a podcast and has run one for a couple of months or episodes, get a good feel about what it's like, 
maybe sit in on an episode or two. Um, feel free to ask Charles or myself if you'd like to come and join us for an episode, and you can maybe watch behind the scenes, or uh, if you're involved in basketball, definitely hit us up and we can have you on as a guest. Um, otherwise, uh, I, I would encourage you to look into it. There are smaller scale systems that you can get where you can just upload yourself. You can maybe get a roadcaster or something, and uh, then it's just a, a matter of consistency and content. But um, when you're combining video with audio, multiple hosts, and you want to produce something a bit higher quality, it does become uh, it does become a bit more. Uh, uh, the resources required, such as your time, your, your concentration, your effort, are, are a bit more, but are worth, it, are definitely worth it. Um, so thank you all for your time. I hope this has enlightened you on 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 podcasting and radio shows. Now, uh, I guess the oh yeah, one of, a couple of other things. Um, definitely make sure your communication with your team is a one. Have a platform that you can all share that you regularly check and. And uh, if you're the producer or the showrunner, um, it may sound silly, but check up on your team, set events, uh, set a calendar that you can all share. Uh, verbally isn't always the best way of communicating. People have so much going on and they'll forget, but if it's written and they get regular reminders, for some people it may be nagging, but that's what the business world does. And it's good to actually go off a timetable because then you can allocate your time better and you know what you're doing. You get more efficient time. Use. So that's, uh, that's one other benefit there. Um, and apart from that, the schedule, uh, you'll have ideas at the very outset of what you want your podcast to be and which episode is which. And let me tell you something right now, write that down. And then as soon as you start your podcast, it'll all go out the window. You'll look back at it, but it all goes out the window as soon as that first podcast is recorded uh, or, or radio show. And while it hasn't been a waste of time, it's good, I believe, for you to get your ideas out and work off of it. So if your plan lines up, and it can help you communicate your plan to people as well. Um, as I mentioned, verbal communication can work, but if you've got something written, it shows that you've taken the time to actually think about it, uh, plan it out a bit more. And uh, obviously, if, if you're both uh, uh, used to different levels of English, uh, you know, something on paper can be communicated sometimes easier. But uh, leaving with that, um, I just want to thank once again my amazing team, the team down at uh, DRN1, uh, all the amazing guests, all the, uh, all the fantastic listeners, and um, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, queries, would like to join us on balls, uh, you're an athlete, comment below, and uh, yeah, have a great day everyone. Peace out.